it looks like we could be at a pivotal moment in the financial system where an organized group of traders are taking on a strategy that isn't new but has never been implemented on this scale. As a result, stocks that were previously little known, low on liquidity, bankrupt, destined to fail, or simply part of the frenzy are now soaring faster than anything we have seen in a long time. Brokerages are capping, limiting, or simply warning investments into these stocks that are rising higher. It looks like this battle has only just begun. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to talk about not just what's happening, but of course, the repercussions. I'm going to bring you into all the details that you need to know. Obviously, I'm sure you're aware of what's been happening on a general level. I'm not going to cover all that I did in previous videos, but I don't want to harp on the things that you are obviously aware of. I want to cover some things that I think you really should know about what's happening today. As I record this, brand new information coming directly from Robinhood. They say right here, changes due to ongoing market volatility, opening new positions in the securities listed in the table below is currently allowed, but limited. You see what they're doing? They are restricting the amount of the stocks that you can purchase. And I'll show you what that restriction looks like. Are there limits to increasing my existing positions yes the table below shows the maximum number of shares and options contracts to which you can increase your positions please note that these are aggregate limits for each security and not per order limits and include shares and options contracts that you already hold these limits may be subject to change throughout the day so you can look through here it's all the names all of those big names that were trading, they were high flying, you're looking at GameStop and AMC and all the others are basically restricted to one share, one share. So effectively, they're banning, they're banning it. They do not want this to happen on their platform. Even though this is the group of traders that are in that platform on Reddit. And those are the ones that are most active on Robinhood. And so I think this is going to be a huge detriment to this business. It's going to be a serious downfall because I think a lot of people are going to pull out of it. They want to be able to do this. And Robinhood, at the same time, they're running into their own issues because they need to be aware of how they operate. I've got more information about that in just a second, but I just wanted to show you specifically here coming directly from Robinhood's website. They are limiting, they are capping the amount of shares that you can be purchasing today effectively trying to stop this from happening. This is an article out of Bloomberg, and they get into why this is really a problem for Robinhood. While those gains in GameStop and AMC were thrilling Robinhood's customers and punishing the Wall Street short sellers who had bet against the stocks, they were putting growing financial pressure on the brokerage. As Robinhood clients purchased shares and call options, the brokerage saw an increase in the amount that it needs to deposit at its clearinghouse, a crucial piece of the market infrastructure that manages industry risk. As a brokerage firm, we have many financial requirements, including the SEC net capital obligations and clearing house deposits. Some of these requirements fluctuate based on the volatility in the markets. It can be substantial in the current environment. These requirements exist to protect investors and the markets, and we take our responsibilities to comply with them seriously, including through the measures we have taken today. So this is what's been happening, suggesting they're doing it for the protection of not only the business, but for the clients too. The customers need to be protected. Now you can do what you want with that information, but I'm just letting you know why they are saying that this is happening. So they had to actually borrow a lot of money. I don't know if I pulled that right here, but they had to actually borrow and take in a whole bunch of uh, basically uh, loans, bailouts in this period of time right now. They needed the cash, went to the big banks, Robin Hood, okay? Robin Hood went to the big banks and they said, hey, can we borrow a lot of money? And they said, absolutely no problem. So that's what's going on right here up until this point. Stay tuned for some more detail. I will bring you every single day. I'll bring you any relevant information. So definitely you want to stay tuned to this channel. 
Elon Musk's tweets are moving the markets and some investors are worried. I think it's hilarious because we are seeing this all over the place that there's a tweet here, there's some sort of event there, and they can really, really affect the markets because the markets are so fragile, so volatile. And yes, sometimes there are instances where something as simple as a tweet could impact a stock, or in this case, your Bitcoin jumping up 20%. But we need to understand that that's okay, because that's what the free market is all about. When you hear of something, when you see something, when you are dealing with an issue, when you have bankruptcy, when there are things that are taking place, that's going to affect the markets. And that's what a market is supposed to do. It's supposed to price in anything that it feels is relevant, but they want to take that out, at least on the downside. And in some cases here, apparently on the upside too, it's whenever they feel that it's all good. They can keep it going higher and higher. And as soon as they feel it's not so good anymore, they'll block it. They'll stop it. They'll restrict it. They'll cap it. They'll limit it. This is how Wall Street thinks the Reddit fueled GameStop trade unravels. So I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just reading you the article. And of course, you can leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Shares of GameStop, the video game retailer, have climbed more than 900% since the start of the year after members in the Reddit community, Wall Street bets, banded together in an effort to push the stock higher. At some point, the thinking goes, shares of GameStop will stop climbing either because most of the shorts have given up and are no longer forced into buying the stock to cover the losing positions or because the brokers or U.S. market regulators intervene. And I want to see what kind of intervention could actually happen at this point. I really want to know. What is the SEC going to do? What are they going to say? They're looking into it. That's where we're at right now. We're looking into it. We are investigating. Well, I want to know what they're going to do because ultimately it's going to affect a lot of people who are holding on to these positions. And I want to see how that really plays out. Does it unfold into something even bigger and faster? Maybe an area like crypto where they don't have that jurisdiction over and suddenly, I mean, already we are seeing some of them rising higher and higher, but could it go to a completely new territory? It's possible. They also discussed, you know, silver and, and things, uh, precious metals, but it really hasn't been there yet. There has been definitely some interest in it, but nothing compared to what we've seen in things like GameStop. So I'm going to track it for you. I'll let you know. More on the concerns right here in this article. Investors are concerned that if GameStop continues to rise in such a volatile fashion, it may ripple through the financial markets, causing losses at brokers like Robinhood and forcing hedge funds who bet on the stock to sell other securities to raise cash. So that's how this could start to tumble. Not necessarily completely creating the next collapse, but certainly there could be some you know, devastation to certain stocks, certain sectors, and we could see a temporary correction. There's no doubt about it. I don't know how it's going to unfold. If this goes higher and higher and more pressure is put on and it grows and grows, obviously, the bigger it gets, the more of an impact this has, especially if they come in and they start to try and restrict it to a larger degree, not just at the brokerage level, but something else. There are also fears that GameStop mania is a sign of a larger bubble in the market and that is unraveling. It could also cause turbulence and hit retail investors hard. A number of lawmakers also called for an investigation into the chaotic trading, which is ridiculous. The Securities and Exchange Commission said Friday it will look into the regulated body's actions to uncover its decisions made disadvantaged investors. Quote, there's way too much leverage in the system. We're starting to see the signs of that this excess leverage is going to be unwound in a way that will create headwinds for the stock market and other risk assets for more than just a few days. That is interesting to me. I want to just make clear, yes, there is excessive leverage, but all of this, whether you're on the side of the retail investor and you think that Wall Street bets and Reddit has doing, they're doing something that is altruistic and they're doing something that is fantastic, or you think that the short sellers should be able to do whatever they want. This I think that's actually the way I look at it is completely a separate argument altogether because we've got 
different things that are happening here. You know, you've got the retail traders, you've got the hedge funds, you've got the banks, okay? All of these things, they interact with each other. But above it all is the central banks or the Federal Reserve in this case here. The Federal Reserve is largely just sitting back, they're relaxing, all the chaos happens. And meanwhile, they are the ones to blame. They are the ones that are doing everything, creating the bubbles in the first place, and they have created a mess. And what do they do? They come out with another solution. There's always a, quote, solution that they provide. We'll bail that out, we'll bail that out. And meanwhile, they're consuming. They're consuming and consuming. We were told that they would sell off their balance sheet. Don't worry, Congress. We're going to do this for you. This is 2008, 2009. We're going to do this. You don't have to worry, though, because we're going to give that all back. We're going to let the market take it back. It's only temporary. That was a lie, and now we know it. Take a look at these high-flying stocks. I mean, it is crazy. GME, that's the black. You could see AMC right under that. Cost. Cost went up something ridiculous at one point just in the last. I mean, they're pulling this back from the beginning of the year. But if you take it just over a period of, let's say, five days, you're going to see some absolutely incredible. I think cost was over 1,700%. I mean, cost. Cost. I have not seen a product made by Cost in I don't know, fifteen years at least. At least. I mean, I think I had a pair of headphones back in the in the Walkman days. I don't know. If you have a Cost product, please let me know. But anyway, I'm just seeing a lot of these different stocks today that are not really, you know, what what changed from the beginning of the this year 2021 up until today is just the amount of money that's been flowing in the short squeeze and so on i get the game i, I know what's happening here i'm just saying you know how how high can this go that's really ultimately the big question and we're gonna see i'm gonna document it here you can see what has been happening over this period of time. I mean, a lot of the different stocks, whether we're looking at energy sector, financial, industrial, and so on, most of them have not performed well so far in 2021. Now, of course, energy was heading higher up until the middle of the month, but now that has come down quite a bit. So I believe that's also with the... Um, commodities as well that were going higher and certainly they've been up over where they had been before that but we're just looking at it being ultimately not as strong as the pace was initially at the beginning of the year maybe more money is flowing into these other high-flying stocks right now this is a list right here. If you are interested, take a look at all of these ETFs that are exposed to GameStop to see what happens with them. And maybe it won't necessarily be all positive. All right. So you could look through here if you're interested. I'm, I'm just going to show you here. And, and if you want to pause it, if you want to look at the link in the description, it's all yours. Jim Cramer, everybody's favorite, quote, you've already won. Cramer tells investors to take a home run and sell GameStop. Basically saying, don't go for the grand slam, take the home run, you have already won. This is somebody here who clearly doesn't know what's going on. This is not about necessarily just profit for some of these people, as well as the fact that they are largely inexperienced. So it's not about you know, just getting that portfolio up five or 10%. This is something about clearly going for that grand slam and ensuring that the, the, you know, what the point here is to crush those shorts that hasn't happened yet because the shorts are still holding on. And until that happens, I don't think many of them will be letting go. Kevin O'Leary cheers GameStop frenzy despite the risk as real world lesson for novice investors. Very smart in what he had said here. I mean, this is the case. This is the market. You can gain a lot of money in certain cases and you can lose it all just the same. 
Quote, I think it's fantastic what's going on. Leave it alone. And that's right. They shouldn't be doing something, intervening in the markets like this and, you know, choosing when they're going to allow something to rise higher or when they're going to prevent a collapse. They are obviously hanging on to their friends. Why? Because the Federal Reserve and all of the big investment institutions are all in bed together. They are doing this to protect themselves. Why? Because we know the creation of that involved all of the big bankers. We know how it was created. That is documented. It's not... It's absolutely not a question. We know that. And so you can see the revolving door and how all of these people, I mean, after the financial crisis, think about this. If you're not aware of this, I'm sure you are, especially if you made it to this point in the video. But think about this. After the financial crisis, we figured out how much corruption, how much greed, how much disgusting behavior was going on behind the scenes at all these financial institutions. They received the bailouts, right? That's that's bad enough as it is. But then they said, we're going to reform the financial system. And you know what we're going to do? We are going to make sure that this is done right. So we're going to get our friends at JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and the whole group to sit down together and make sure it is done right. I mean, you got to be crazy. You got to be crazy to think that that's a good idea for the people that created the problem in the first place. And then you hire them back. It's like getting getting the, the murderer or something to, to tell you what you should do about the laws and murder. No, no, no. You, you can't do that, okay? Because they're guilty. They're guilty of the crime. And then you're going to ask them for help? What is this, Hannibal Lecter or something? This is nonsense. All right, last thing. This is a list of different companies who are kind of in the same situation. On the left-hand side, these stocks are net long but lack liquidity. Could see outsized moves. On the right-hand side, these stocks are net short but lack liquidity. Could see outsized moves. You're looking through this list you know, you might see some names on here that you recognize, you might not, but ultimately this is what what they're saying, I'm not saying this, could be another potential list of names that could rise higher because of the whole short squeeze they're looking for new names. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. All you gotta do is click one button. Thank you very much. If you want to learn about e-commerce, I teach you for free. You can do so right here at the amazongps.com. If you want to know about the financial system, how it was all built, why this is all a mess today, I, I discussed that in these two books right here. Check them out at the link in the description. And the audiobook is available at themoneygps.com. Hold on. Have you seen this video yet? A lot of detail directly connected with this issue you just saw today. So you want to watch it, click it. I'll see you there.